In this video, we want to talk about constant velocity motion, and we want to understand some of the equations of that kind of motion. And so to start, uh, let's just draw this V versus T graph. And I'm leaving some, some room up top, uh, and we'll see why in a second. But we're going to have velocity in meters per second versus time in seconds. Okay, what is constant velocity? Well, I think it's pretty easy to, to guess. It just means that we have some constant value, right? So the object, it could be a constant velocity of zero. And I just want to point this out real quick. We could have a constant velocity of zero meters per second, which would just mean that the object is not moving, which means that we get this flat line on the time axis. Um, yes, that's true. Um, it's just kind of the obvious case. And so we're not going to talk about that one in particular. Um, but uh, really, let's just say negative, positive, whatever. Let's just take a positive constant velocity, right? And so this slope is actually zero, right? If it's constant, it has a slope of zero, and there's just some positive value. Well, what does that look like on an x versus t graph? So x in meters, time in seconds. Well, it's got a slope. The value of this is positive, which means we need a graph where when we take the slope, let me do this in red, when we take the slope, it's just a constant positive value, and that's just a straight diagonal line. All right, so if we take the slope at any point, it's always just the same positive value. All right? So anytime you have constant velocity motion, all we're saying is that uh, we have this um, you know, straight diagonal line on the x versus t graph. Let me go back to that case, though, real quick where um, where we have the velocity just at zero, right? Zero meters per second velocity. I do want to point out that in this case, the slope of the, the x versus t graph, it's not some diagonal line. It, it would actually itself be um, a straight flat line on the time axis, okay? I just want to point that out. Now... Any, any other time, right? This is kind of your special case, right? Because you have a velocity of zero meters per second. That's, um, that's going to require us to do a little bit uh, more thinking to figure out what the x versus t graph looks like. But any other case, if you just have any sort of, you know, what if it's a, a negative flat line? Well, that would just correspond to some downward pointing diagonal line on the x versus t graph, okay? So this is, is really widely applicable. And then... What does that mean for the acceleration? Well, this one um, should become very obvious very quickly, right, when you're asked this question in the future. But we already said that the slope equals zero, right, and so the acceleration is going to equal zero, right? Zero meters per second squared. And so that is what constant velocity motion looks like graphically. And you really should commit this sort of idea to memory because this doesn't change. If you have constant velocity motion, this is what it looks like. And the only exception is when that constant velocity happens to be zero meters per second, then that will affect this part, right? And the x versus t will instead be a flat line, right? Now, if you have, once again, some negative value for v versus t, then this corresponds to a negative diagonal line. But it's the same thing. You're just mirroring um, what, what you did for these two graphs here. Okay, and so that is a constant velocity. Okay, now let's talk about uh, what is that velocity. Well, that velocity is equal to um, delta x over delta t, and that's going to be an average, so I'm just going to put a bar above it and let us know that that v bar is just the average velocity. Now, for again, for constant velocity motion, that actually doesn't matter because the average is the same every single second, right? And so that's not changing. Um, but just to, to be clear in the future, it's, it's good to keep that in mind. So that's x final minus x initial over t final minus t initial. And that's your constant velocity motion. Okay, and what, uh, what else could we glean from this? Well, it's important to know um, what, uh, what, what equations we have for motion here. Okay, so one equation that we, we need to keep in mind is that x final is equal to x initial plus that velocity times the amount of time that we are moving in that direction. So what does this mean? If you want to figure out how far an object travels, 
at constant velocity in a certain amount of time, then you need to plug into this equation. So what you can do is just to say, uh, say, let me subtract x initial to the other side. x final minus x initial is just delta x. So that's just the change in the x position. So delta x is equal to v times t. And so if, again, if you want to figure out, you know, if an object is moving with a constant velocity of five meters per second for five seconds, how far did it move? Well, five meters per second times five seconds is equal to 25 meters. You can see that the seconds cancel each other out, and we're left with 25 meters is equal to delta x. Okay, and that is how you apply it. Now, we could also say, well, what if I know how far an object, object travels, and I know how long it travels, and it takes to make that travel, what's the, what's the velocity? Well, if I have x and t and I want v, just divide, right? Delta x divided by t is equal to v. And that's just simply manipulating this equation right here, right? And similarly, what if I want to um, know how long it takes? Delta x divided by v equals t. So if you have a, a uh, I don't know, a toy car, and you have a room that's five meters long, and the toy car goes at, um, let's just say one meter per second, how long does it take for the toy car to get across the room? Five meters divided by one meter per second. It's going to be five seconds. Okay. And that's it. So basically this one simple equation, this is the one that I would box, right? This is the one that I would commit to memory. That one simple equation gives you many different applications just by taking x final minus x initial, right? Get delta x and then just divide for whatever variable you need, right? And solve for that variable. Okay, I will say though, not every question um, wants that exactly. Sometimes you, um, you know, you might actually have to plug in a value for x final or x initial or and solve for the other one. So this is the most general form of the equation, and this is always, always true for constant velocity motion in a straight line. Okay, and I and technically there's there's more to that. Um, it's really generally true for any constant velocity motion, but uh, I just want to be careful because there are situations in, in circular motion where um, this isn't necessarily going to apply. And so we'll talk about that at a later time. But for now, this equation is what you always want to remember. Um, there are very, very few exceptions to when you can use this as long as we have constant velocity motion. Okay. Okay. What else can we write? Well, one other equation I like to write is that v initial is equal to v final is equal to v constant is equal to v, right? And so all I'm saying is if I have constant velocity, right, this is for constant velocity only, right? Uh, and I'm just stressing that because this is important to remember because the other situation is constant acceleration and we have to keep those equations separate. You have to remember this uh, to separate those in your mind. So whatever initial velocity you start with, that's going to be the final velocity, which is just some constant velocity, right? It's an unchanging number. And then you can just call that v, right? There's no need to call it v initial, v final, v constant. Just call it v, right? So with constant velocity motion, we don't have to use any subscripts about initial or final or whatever. Just call it velocity, right? So that's the second tip or equation or whatever you want to say that you really need to commit to memory. Finally, the third one, constant velocity motion. Okay, this one we haven't gotten to Newton's laws yet on uh, so far in this video series, but uh, let me write the sum of the forces is equal to mass times acceleration. This is Newton's second law. Um, sometimes instead of the summation um, sigma, the uppercase sigma, sometimes people do F net. Okay, you can do that if you want. F net equals mass times acceleration. Those are the same thing. Now, really quick, why am I using these arrows? I'm using these arrows because these things are vectors. It's a half arrow. It's just out of laziness, right? But uh, that's how everyone does it at this point. So um, F net is equal to mass times acceleration. We'll talk more about how that applies later, but I'm giving this to you now because this is important to write down for constant velocity motion. Well, in constant velocity, acceleration is equal to zero, 
which I'll write as the zero vector. Um, and that's just related to, uh, I guess you could say more theoretical uh, mathematics, why we have to write it like that. Um, but essentially what we're saying then is that the sum of the forces is equal to zero. Okay, or if you don't want to write it with the vector symbols, you can just say F net equals zero. Okay, and let me box that one. So that is the third thing that you need to remember for constant velocity motion. So to recap, x final equals x initial plus the velocity times t, and then this velocity is not v initial or v final or anything else. It's not anything like that. It's just constant. So we just call it v, right? Constant velocity. So just put a v. And then for constant velocity motion, we have to remember this is the general form of Newton's second law. Um, actually, there is a more general form, but this is the one we use in this class. Sum of the forces equals mass times acceleration. But because it's constant velocity, acceleration is zero, so the net force acting on an object is zero. So all that means is that the forces, whatever forces are acting on an object, however many it might be, they are equal. They, they basically balance all of each other, uh, all of the other forces out, right? There are no... There's no net force. There's no, um, you know, if uh, if you have an object and you have a force pointing up on it and then a force pointing down on it, this would be a net force. Okay, and we'll talk more about that a little bit later because this part up here, right, is only only has that much of a magnitude. This part right here is so much more of a magnitude. This would be some positive magnitude, some negative one, and then you would say that F net is some something negative, right? The positive part minus the negative part, you're still gonna be left with something. What we're saying for constant velocity motion is that those things are balanced, right? So the positive part equals the negative part, and then these come out to be zero, okay? Again, we'll talk more about that later when we talk about forces.